What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for coming back to Cobra TV. This is going to be an episode where I want to try and create a gamer talk show where we talk about everything in gaming, you know, reminisce on some retro uh, stuff, uh, talk about current events in the gaming industry, talk about indie games together. And what I want to do is I always want to have a guest co-host. And where I'm going to find those guest co-hosts is from you guys. So if you guys have a YouTube channel, you want to come on, you want to talk about your favorite game, talk about a game that you're anticipating, have some random game banter and talk about your YouTube channel, uh, how long you've been doing it, where you're going on in the future. And there are no qualifications. You don't have to have a whole bunch of subscribers, even if you got two subscribers. You know, if you're passionate about gaming and you want to talk about games in general, then I'd love to have you guys on. Coming up in future episodes of this new show, which is in addition to what we have here on Cobra TV, it's not changing, but we're going to have Syrian Gaming Legacy Zero, Rutman Apple's No More Shadows, which I love No More, No More Shadows YouTube channel. I really do, and I've never had him on the show, and I cannot wait to have him come on. In this new show, we're also gonna be inviting developers to come on. We always hear a lot about the developer's game and everything like that. Uh, of course, I want them to talk about that, but I also wanna hear what kind of gamer that developer is, what kind of games he's used to playing and what kind of games that he's looking forward to outside of the game that he's working on. I think that would also make great chat. But like I said, everybody is welcome to come on the show. Just message me and we'll set up a day, we'll set up a time and we'll record. These shows are gonna be recorded. They're not going to be live right away until we can get a good format going. And then once that's established, we'll go ahead and start doing them live over YouTube. But anyways, guys, in this episode, we talk about some random game banter. Uh, we talk about No Man's Sky, some two things that are in the news uh, recently. But if you wanna get on a show, just add me on Facebook, add me on Twitter, uh, one of those two, and send me a private message, and we'll go ahead and set that up. And even if you don't have a YouTube channel, you're welcome to come on as well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this first episode of this additional uh, show that we're going to have here on Cobra TV. It wasn't planned very well, so it didn't come out as, as good as I wanted it to. But hey, it's the first shot. As always, love you guys. See you in this video. Until next time. How is everybody doing out there? Thank you for coming back to Cobra TV. And this is the new show that we're going to be starting here maybe once a week. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably increase that to maybe every other day. I don't know how we're going with this, but we're going to have on different guests uh, on the show doing co-hosting and things like that. Legacy Zero is going to be coming on. Roman Apples as well is going to be coming on. And, you know, it's just it's just a, it's a talk show for gamers. And what we want to do with this show is just talk about games and talk about things that we're excited about or maybe things that we're upset about. Uh, and joining me today, we have Laura aka pixie how you doing laura i'm good how are you i'm doing great doing very good um and and there's many things that we're going to talk about on today's show red dead red dead redemption 2 i cannot talk today uh red dead redemption 2 um wow i mean that that is great great news red dead redemption was one of my favorite games i enjoyed it i i think i enjoyed red dead redemption undead nightmare even more though Although I never really got into playing Red Dead Revolver. Did you play any Red Dead Revolver? No, I haven't. I didn't either. I didn't either. That one completely skipped me by. I don't know what I was doing at that point in time in my life or what I was playing at that point in time. But I never I never did. I, I've never even owned it. But we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we have some No Man's Sky stuff that I want to bring up. Some of it good and some of it bad. Uh, it's not news shattering, you know, world breaking news or whatever. It's just some things that are just going around. I want to bring up some of that because whether you like it or not, whether you love it or whether you hate it, No Man's Sky is not going away. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to go away as a game, but it's. Uh, I think that No Man's Sky and its release and you know its anticipation before and the final product and you know the drama that surrounds it, I don't think it's going to go away for a long time. What do you think? I don't think so either. I think that with you know with No Man's Sky, it's going to get brought up every time a game flops or every time there's a promise uh, that didn't uh, you know, come through. But for what it's worth, I do love No Man's Sky, but and there's a big but there, there there's too much there's too much missing out of it. We're going to read part of an article from a game developer. Uh, he's I don't know, he's a game engineer or a software engineer or something like that, and he dissected the game, and we're going to read part of that article 
where he says that No Man's Sky is a good game, but it was not executed well. Like the actual engine is not being used to its full potential. Uh, well, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Speaking of, what games? What game are you playing now? What games are you playing now? Well, I've been playing Battlefield and No Man's Sky, and but I've been mostly playing Burnout Three. Burnout Three, really? You went way back in time, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. I love Burnout Three. I do too. Uh, so, what what made you go back and uh, start playing Burnout Three? I miss the classic racing of Burnout. Yeah, it you know that was probably one of my favorite ones. It was the only racing game that I've ever played that it, it kind of felt like a fighting game in a way. Yes, it definitely did. Yeah, with the takedowns, I mean, you know, you would get to the point where you and the other person you were playing like on split screen, and you know, it would be like this battle trying to take each other down, and some of the races would be really, really close. Loved, loved that game. What do you think of the uh, the last burnout? What was it called? Paradise? What did you think of that? I didn't like it very much. You didn't like it? No. Why? Tell me Tell me why you didn't like it. Oh, I didn't like the free roam. And the really? Fact, yeah, I just I didn't have that burnout feel. Right, I can dig that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... It, you think you're getting something a whole lot cooler because you, you've opened up the map. I remember playing it for a little while. Uh, not a whole lot, but I, I tried it out. And it just felt like, I don't know, you're right, it did not feel like Burnout. There were some things that did make it feel like Burnout, like the music and, you know, some of the car animations and things like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you ask me, the Burnout Paradise versus Burnout 3, I'd go Burnout 3 any day. Oh, yeah, me too. So did you play Drive Club or anything like that? Um, I have played Midnight Club. Midnight? Uh, no, no, I'm talking. Man, you're retro as heck, aren't you? <laughs> I, yeah, I am. <laughs> but you, you've never uh, played Drive Club? No, I haven't. I have to ask you at this point: Do you even own a PS4? Yes, I, I do. All right, all right, all right. I, yeah, I have to ask, you know, because I mentioned Drive Club, and you know, you you say I'm Midnight Club. Um, I'm just joking. Um, with the Red Dead Redemption news, how do you feel about that? I am looking forward to it. I am too. I am too. I, I hope they put a Red Dead Redemption 2 Undead Nightmare um, thing in there too because I remember playing that um, and they did such an amazing job on those zombies. Uh, not not. I'm not talking about just how they look, but definitely how they sounded. Some of those times, man, it was super creepy. I remember riding my horse and I fell into like this little ditch or whatever and I was inside this ditch and it was there was just it was crawling with all these zombies. And there was all these uh, sounds and everything coming from all... I mean, there was tons of them, man. And I remember feeling kind of freaked out a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was really, really cool. I mean, um, but yeah, the, the original story of Red Dead Redemption, you know, not talking about the Undead Nightmare, which was just a cool addition. Um, it was amazing. And I really feel like that this Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be even better but you know, with the GTA Five online, uh, how do you feel about you know they uh, Red Dead Redemption just bought the domain for Red Dead Redemption Online? How do you feel about you know that kind of online interaction with Red Dead Redemption? It could I, it work? I, I guess it could, but I'd rather it not have it. Not have it at all, or just... Uh, you know what I liked about Rockstar back in the old days is the open-world multiplayer. Mm-hmm. You know, where they just said, okay, well, here's our map. It's online. You get all the guns. You get all the stuff, the toys to play with. You know, just go kill each other. Go see what happens. Yeah, just I, go do what you will. Right. I used to <laughs> love that, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with more options, really. I mean, I guess if you look at GTA Five, it still has that. Yeah, it does. Um, one of the cool things about Red Dead Redemption online uh, back in the day when I was playing Red Dead Redemption is you could go to like uh, these these places, these buildings or these towns or whatever, and you could claim them and say, yep, this is mine. You're going to have to come take it over from me. Mm -hmm. and, and then as soon as you claimed it, people, you know, they would see that on the map and then they would come and try and take it from you. Yeah, I remember that. But as far as how this is going to turn out, I think it's going to be 
really, really good, and I'm super, super excited. Rockstar kind of reminds me of the Quentin Tarantinos of gaming. What do you think? Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> right? It does. Um, yes. You know, speaking of, you know, a lot of people that listen to this channel, they know that one of my favorite games of all time is Grand Theft Auto 4. And it, it, I, I'm not saying that Grand Theft Auto 4 is better than Grand Theft Auto 5. But what I am saying is that there are certain aspects of 4 that I prefer over 5. I, I, you know, I, 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 it, it, a lot of people disagree with some of those things. Like, I think the helicopter controls and how hard they were to control. I think that, you know, the helicopter controls in GTA 4 were the best. Because, it, yes, it challenged players to become good at something. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't have that stupid skill level that's in GTA 5. And even once you got up on the skill level all the way on GTA 5, it, you still had the turbulent. But I was looking on PSN the other day, and I noticed that they had Grand Theft Auto 1, 2, and 3. And they also, of course, they've got Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PS4. Mm -hmm. Where's Grand perfect. Theft Auto 4? I know, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, why can't they just port that over? I mean, don't remaster it. Don't touch it. You know, don't add new graphics to it. Don't add the controls from 5 into 4. Just make it playable on the ps4 i really Wh wish they would do that i do too why is it the only one it's missing i don't know it's really strange i mean it is really strange i think i even seen bully on there um on the p on the ps4 i'm not sure if i was seeing things or if maybe that was a dream um but yeah i i i just i i really wish they would bring it back uh or or port it over to the ps4 um, and leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't, yeah. don't don't try and you know spin it with a better graphics or anything. I think it's it's a classic. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. And it is. It is. It really is. Uh, I think you know at the same time I think Grand Theft Auto Five looks a heck of a lot better than GTA Four, um, aesthetic wise. And there are some amazing amazing functionalities of the uh, GTA 5 online you know what the grouping together and doing the missions together I think that's really really cool uh, but it's not something that I'm entirely too interested in but yeah it, it would be it would be wonderful if they just ported it over um, and I've seen a couple articles about that uh, I was searching online like <laughs> I think I asked Google you know why is uh, GTA 4 not on PS4 or when or is, are there plans or something like that? And there have been articles written where people would really like to see it um, get ported over. Have you seen anything from Rockstar about it? Uh, no, I haven't seen anything at all. Ugh. I, it might be something that they might wait for, like a 10-year anniversary, but who knows? And what year did it come out? Uh, 2008, maybe? So we have to wait two years? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> well, I don't even know if that's a thing, you know? I mean, we, yeah, we, may, it, ne we may never get it at all. Don't say that. <laughs> I'd rather wait two years. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that there's a new burnout being made, right? I do. I cannot wait to see it. Yeah, there was. Uh, I haven't read up on it since I initially first heard it, but they they were talking about how it was going to be like a, a Burnout Three influence. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we'd have to look up into it. Um, but I, I I'm not. You know, I I don't know too much about it, and but it's really good to see that coming back. I can't wait to see a trailer. Yeah, we'd have to look for it. Maybe there is one. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. But you know, I I want to kind of shift over to a little bit of to a little bit of No Man's Sky, uh, and there there was an article that I I recently just came across. Uh, it was titled No Man's Sky Promoter uh, Sony Blocking Access to PS4 Players Asking for a Refund. Huh. So uh, this article is claiming that people are saying if they're asking for a refund, Sony's saying, banned for life. Are you serious? 
I don't think it's true. There's no way it could it be possibly be. true. It can't be. It okay, be. It, it goes on to say, No Man's Sky promoter Sony seems to be holding a grudge against those PS4 players who dared to ask for a refund from them. Many customers who bought the game complained that they were fooled by its advertisements. Mm -hmm. Which I can agree with a lot of people who, who are claiming that. Yes, me too. No Man's Sky showed much promise when it was first announced. Customers snapped up the game uh moments before uh, after its release however many complained that the game failed to deliver what it was promised earlier the disappointment was so great that large number a uh, large number of disgruntled this is written in poor english by the way a large number of disgruntled customers were asking for a refund sony's refund policy on no man's sky sony is one of the promoters of no man's sky and one of the promoters is, the, is you mean publisher does he mean publisher and one of its main vendors, especially for PS4 players. Uh, normally, the Japanese gaming company does not entertain refunds. Normally, does not entertain refunds. Hmm. Did However, this guy the even read? what did this guy even reread his own article? I I'm not sure. I I'm not sure. Maybe it's like an autocorrect thing. I have no idea. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> However, the huge number of refund requests. So, uh, surprised Sony that it was forced to treat it as a special case. Um, goes on to read, No Man's Sky PS4 customers who asked for a refund were surprised to find out that their PlayStation Network PSN ID can no longer access the network support. Blocked PS4 players could not even complain to Sony. Wait, blocked PS4 players could not even complain to Sony about this since they could not even use their PSN ID to contact or talk to someone in the PSN support or admin, according to Frag Hero. Many vented their anger and frustration in various social forms such as NeoGAF. Some resorted in using alternative PSN accounts in order to gain access to the chat room and reported their situation. Uh, Sony has yet to reply about the situation, but Many are already criticizing the Japanese company, seeming vindictiveness against people who dared to ask for a No Man's Sky refund. So what do you think about that? You think it's true? I don't think it's true. I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, that that's lawsuit, right? I mean, that's yeah, retali think. that's retaliation. I mean, that's <laughs> hey, uh, Sony, can I get a refund? Banned. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> so you mean to tell me just because I wanted a refund on one game, you're not going to let me buy 100 games in the future? Come right? on. That's just stupid on their part. Right. Yeah. I, if it is true, shame on Sony. Right? Shame yeah. on Sony. Um, you know, whether whether I like No Man's Sky or not, it, you know, or whether I like what I got or parts of what I got, doesn't mean that I don't, that I'm not aware of the reasons why people want a refund, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a little upset as well, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely one of those people that are holding on a little bit thinking, okay, well maybe something happened. Maybe they're going to update this game. Maybe it'll reach its full potential. I don't know. Where, where do you stand in all of it? Um, well, I like the game. I, I, I don't love it. I want to love it, but I don't, I don't hate it. Right. Do you feel like things are missing like when you're playing it? Yes, I do. But something keeps making me go back. I'm not I know it, it's like it's like that uh I don't know, like it keeps calling you back. Yeah. It's like yeah, like you want to love it because I mean and gaming what you can do in No Man's Sky, it, there's there, are, there isn't a whole lot of games out there that um can make you that, that allows you to do what you can in No Man's Sky or what allows you to think you can do in No Man's Sky. I understand what you're trying to say. So have you pretty much just shelved it for now and you're waiting for updates or what's going on? Uh, For now I am. I might go back to it soon. But I, I want more things added on to it. So I'm hope, hoping for a really good update. Yeah, that it's going to need it. I mean, I they I feel like they've waited too long. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, you know, if they had to take some things out, which we know that there's assets that they made for the game, uh, we've seen them before, and they didn't make it into the game, you know, 
then I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand. You know, they fixed all the bugs. You, you wouldn't think it would take too long to just start adding some stuff back in. I mean, even, even little by little by little by little until you know you got, until you got it all in there. I don't know. You know, with it's and it's so weird too because it's like. If people have traveled already and they're in other galaxies, it's 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 not going to have that same awe when you first boot up the game for the very first time now. You know, that part of it's kind of ruined for a lot of people. It is, I know. I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to see where this story goes. And with a lot of people saying that No Man's Sky has abandoned their uh their studio and they ran away i think it's you know it's it's <laughs> I, I i to think about it in terms you know like okay no uh, hello games you know they're they're hiding out somewhere in, uh, with edward snowden you know and they're uh, being protected by some country somewhere or they're in a bunker i, I know I, you know they're abandoned building if it actually is abandoned i believe that it, they bought a new studio. I mean, with all that money that they got, they they bought a brand new studio. But I think they're hurting themselves because if they don't do something very quickly, I really don't think they're going to have a chance to make another game in the future. I think if they make a game in the future, they would be lucky to have people buy it. Because there's too many angry people out there. There are. They're, yeah, they're right. I mean, there's there's still a small community that that is still supporting the game. And when I say small, I mean it's it's small. And those people might buy another game from Hello Games. But the general consensus, like if Hello Games comes out, and, uh, like on the next E3 or some other uh, media outlet, say, new game from Hello Games, people are going to automatically just treat it with such disregard. Yeah, you know, they they. I feel like Hello Games has got to do something now. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday, uh, a month ago, you know, that it, to talk or say something, it, you know, not not just for uh, the, its consumers who bought a product from them, but for themselves as well as a company. I mean, even if what they say does get responded again with more hate, at least that there's some information out there that people can always draw back on. You know, Hello Games said, hey, we messed up uh, or something messed up. We had to strip it down. We're working really hard right now, adding a lot of those things back in. You know, something. That way people can go back to it and look at it. You know, all the No Man's Sky live videos and Sean Murray live videos, things like that. At least there would be that text on the internet, on their blog, that people can go back and say, all right, well, is it a lie or is it that something bad happened and they're working on getting it all back in? You know what I mean? There would be that that conflict with the lie. Yeah. And plus, if you they see do, what I'm saying? Yeah. If they do say something, they might get some respect back as well. Like own up to it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, but recently, there there is a little bit of uh, good news, kind of. Uh, there was a, a a developer, or a game engineer, or something. I don't I don't exactly know what he is, or what he does. But it's uh, it's on a website called 3dgamedevblog.com, and he wrote an amazing piece on the the way the game works. And it's a very long read, and I'm only going to go over a couple things in here about his. Uh, I'm going to read the summary part. Um. On how he feels he says as a in his summary part portion uh he goes as a gamer though my feelings are mixed even if that is not my general style of playing i knew for the moment i pre-ordered no man's sky that this is the game where i can just chill out inspect the environment the plants the creatures and a first look that they may seem like you have seen them before but a second look most of them will be different. Maybe it's just the textures will be different, but they are different. Maybe the tiny, maybe it's a tiny small horn on a creature's head. Maybe it's a different creature marking. Maybe it's a different small ship accessory. Uh, the content is there. Even the gameplay, yeah. Even the gameplay, game, blah, blah, blah. even the gameplay one, which they could spawn if they wanted. Uh, you can't say that there isn't. And what you get is a result of a very, very good procedural generation procedure. 
Uh, in fact, the content that No Man's Sky's engine creates for a system within two to three planets exceeds by far the assets you may see in Ark, for example. And of course, nothing will be 100% perfect like all the dinos in Ark, but that's the beauty of it. It's, it's the engine that can create the most gorgeous and majestic creatures, and at the same time, the lamest creatures that ever existed in a video game too. Uh, this is why I bought the game, and this is what I love about the game. Um, I live for the lamest creatures. <laughs> um, on the other hand, he goes on to say, if someone is not determined to chill out, be patient, or pay attention to detail, it's totally not worth it, and all the procedural generation is really a total waste of resource. And then it goes on to say, uh, later on down in the end of the summary, uh, it goes on to say, after all the research, I know that the game has enough content to at least differentiate everything on each planet, so I can't blame the content or the engine for not delivering. I have to blame the engine tuning and its configuration. I also have to blame those cursed multi-platform releases and the publisher. I'm 1 million percent sure that the devs were rushed to release the game. The game that we got is not even close to a finished game, and obviously not even uh, close to reaching the 80% of the capabilities of the underlying game engine. From inspecting the files, this is crystal clear. It's closer to a tech demo, demo than a game. Trying to deliver the same stuff over PC and PS4 simply butchers the game and probably trying to make it work on lower end specs as higher end as higher frame rates as possible uh, butchers the game even more. Personally, I'm expecting updates and lots of them. I can forgive lots of Hello Games mistakes on the game release, overpricing, lack of communication, even the lack of features like multiplayer, which honestly I don't give a about. But I can't forgive, what I, what I cannot forgive is that considering that the pre-release pretty messed up and pressured situation, they didn't at least deliver an overall endgame engine configuration. What modders are doing right now is to dive into the files and try to find ways of making that very same engine create richer and more diverse content and most of the time that they succeed on that simply because it is capable of delivering way better stuff than it is doing right now so all those options should be should have been accessible to every single player and not found out only by modders obviously they they chose uh not to do this is because they wanted all the users to have the same universe so that sharing waypoints, creatures, planets uh, makes sense, but they shouldn't. They should have included that. Uh, force offline play and prove to all gamers what the engine is capable of. Uh, for some reason, I'm convinced that Hello Games sooner or later is going to deliver. You simply don't abandon four plus years of working on an engine, which is in fact great. And for those Hello Games conspiracy fans. Really, guys, there are a thousand of other ways that they could have taken our money and go, and that would happen a lot sooner. Uh, till the till the game engine blossoms, Greg. And, you know, reading his summary, but if you read throughout his whole article, you can see that this person does have... Uh, he's educated enough to make these claims um, because he's seen what the game engine can do. And what he's really trying to say is that the game engine is not doing what it's supposed to do in 100%. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? Like, yeah. that's amazing that the game engine itself is not delivering 100% of what it can do. That's That blows my mind. It's crazy. That they don't have it tuned up enough. Like you said, he blames the configuration and the tuning. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's that. I mean... And and uh, as far as abandoning the the that thing goes, you could see that they're patching the game, they're fixing the bugs. The developers themselves that work on at Hello Games, they are very vocal. Inez, um, then you've got Simon, then you've got Paul Weir. I mean, they're very vocal. They're all saying they're working. Every <laughs> single one of them are saying they're working. It's just that the Hello Games main company Twitter account and Sean Murray's Twitter account are. Uh, uh, you know, they're quiet, they're dormant. Um, but all the other developers, you know, they're not afraid to say, hey, we're working. Hey, we're, we're working on updates. Sean Murray's okay. 
we're working on updates. And then, you know, if you look at your patch notes on your PS4, you can see that it's being updated. Um, and then if you look at the Steam, um, there's an app you can get on Steam, and you can look at the internal branches consistently getting updated. So they're working on something. They're getting ready to release more updates. And to tell you the truth, I can't... If they, re if they waited this long, if they release another one that says even more bug fixes, it's done. I, I mean, put a nail in it, you know, close yeah. it up. It, it's done. If there's an even more bug fixes, they, they have to deliver something. Otherwise, uh, no one's going to care. Yeah, and their game's not going to survive. Right. It, it's just not going to... No one's, no one's going to give a crap anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they did bring it all back after the first of the year, my gosh, that would be a big mistake. I agree. I mean... I don't know. Uh, so, you were watching uh, the Star Citizen uh, gameplay trailer that they just had at the Citizen Con. What did you think of that? Uh, I thought it was awesome. I know, right? It's so beautiful. Uh, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me when I was watching that is the fact that when he landed his ship on that planet and he had to go to that... Uh, that waypoint it mm -hmm. took him how many minutes to get there like 12 minutes 13 minutes even longer maybe it was a good amount of time it was and there was things to do along the way there was things to stop and look at and at one point he gets out and he looks through his um, space binoculars and he sees that there's like a sand creature there oh yeah and uh you know what i mean and then so there was that little bit of uneasy feeling as he was crossing that you know is he going to uh, get eaten by this thing or attacked by this thing or something like that. And then that sandstorm that you could see brewing off into the distance. And as he got to that structure that he was uh, inside, that the sandstorm actually caught up to him and there was lightning and everything. It was just, my God, it's just, that's amazing. Yes, I wanted that sandstorm so bad. I know, right? Oh, um, I was getting so impatient. Well, they're supposed to move slow. Silly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So, so are you looking forward to Star Citizen? I am. I can't wait um, to play it. I know, me too. Um, you know, you can buy into the game right now and play a small portion of it. You know, they got like I think three different things that you can do in it. Um, none of the things that we've seen at Citizen Con, though. At least I don't think so. All right, so we got Star Citizen on the horizon. That's getting better and better, and more juicier, more more juicier. And then we also have the new boy in town, uh, Dual Universe. What do you think about Dual Universe? Are you one of the ones that would maybe pay a, a fee, a subscription fee for a game? I'm not interested in, in that, no. You know, you're not interested in paying a monthly fee? No, I'm not. Yeah, it, it's a bit hard. It's a bit difficult. You know, uh, I think it, you know, at, at best, someone like me, uh, if it's going to be like $10 a month, especially if I buy six months worth, that's a $60 game. I'm used to spending that much on games anyway. I might play it for six months, you know, and and maybe I'll be done with it by at that point. Um, I I don't know. It, it's it's definitely what they're promising is an amazing community uh, space experience, um, unlike anything that actually we have out right now. I mean, there's things that there there are games out there that touch on what Dual Universe is trying to offer. You know, like uh, space engineers, uh, in a, in a small way. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely interesting, and I'm more than likely going to give it at least six months worth of play time if I can get that for around sixty bucks. I put it this way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna play this game for sixty dollars worth. And that's it. And then if it's any better than that, then I, I might stay with it. But, you know, War to War, World of Warcraft, um, and then you've got uh, EVE Online, um, and many, 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 many others that have been very successful running years and years worth of uh, their game going strong with subscription fees. So there is a market for it. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. And I understand your point of view as well, the $60. I think that's smart. 
Yeah, I mean, because you know, if if you don't play it after that, then no big deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got six months worth of play time, mm -hmm. or you've you've maybe it's not going to be entirely worth six months if you know they don't if they go uh, more than ten dollars a month. That's all I'm going to put into it uh, at, at the start. You know, like right now, that's all I'm going to put into it. Um, but if it's good enough and it delivers, I might go beyond that. Yeah. Especially with uh, what's added to it, like what you can do. Right. So what other games are out there at, at the moment that, you know, you're kind of looking forward to? Oh, um. Are you a horror fan? Yes, but I'm too afraid of horror games. Wait, you're afraid of horror? You're a horror fan, but you're afraid of horror games. Yes. Like, I was... I was really afraid of PT. No, wait. <laughs> well, that's understandable. I mean, you, you can sit there, you can watch that game like on uh, on YouTube, and it doesn't look like it's all that scary. But if you literally play it yourself, uh, it, it's a much different experience other than just watching it. Um, what do you think of the new Resident Evil first person uh, adventure game? I haven't seen it. They have a, or they had um, a free demo of it on PS4. I'd have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, that and Outlast 2 is also coming out. And uh, did you ever play uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? No, but I did watch uh, YouTube videos of it. Yeah, me too. I, I never even owned it. Um, I just didn't, you know, after watching a couple of YouTube videos, I'm just like, nah, no, nah. it looks kind of cool, um, but just not something that I want to do. <laughs> I was never really interested in playing it. Yeah, I, I feel you on that one. All right, so is there, is there anything else that you know we could talk about or any other games that are on the horizon? So you know your channel is turning into an indie sci-fi gaming channel, right? Indie sci-fi gaming channel. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Well, I, I did cover that Hello Neighbor, and I color uh, covered. Uh, um. I covered, uh, and I covered, uh, Planet Nomads. <laughs> Planet Nomads. <laughs> That's sci fi. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to think of things that are not sci fi, like Agony. Yeah, you uh, have, uh, what, one video of Agony? Two videos of Agony. <laughs> two, I, I have two videos. I have three videos of non sci fi related, uh, content. <laughs> Identity. All right. You know, what? Identity. Identity. Oh, I haven't talked about identity in so long that the news on that game's like a trickle effect. I'm a little bit worried. A little bit worried about identity, and and that's another thing that brings up another good topic. I backed identity. Did you? Uh, yeah, I backed it. I backed it for twenty five dollars. I think it was. Um, that that brings an, an, up another good topic. I also pre ordered No Man's Sky, which if anybody's listening. Uh, I do like No Man's Sky. I'm upset, just like you all are, but I, I enjoy uh, playing uh, the game. But um, I I now have this thing, and I know you're. we've talked before in the past, and you're 100% against pre-ordering and backing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm now in that boat. I mean, if identity crashes and it flops, and I mean, where's my money going to go? You know, like... If they don't finish the project, where, what happens to my money? You know, I mean, I now feel the same way that you do. And explain to me why you don't like pre-ordering. Well, because you don't know what you're getting. Right. You it, don't know what you're getting. Not the final product, at least. You know what you're, what you're hearing, but you don't know right. what you're seeing. You don't know what it's going to play like. Right. Yeah, I, I agree now. I, you know, I, I definitely agree. And, you, you know, it, that's also supporting bad behavior because they can just release anything that they want. They've already gotten the money. And, you know, that that, that it seems like it's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Yeah. You go into GameStop and you try and buy, which I would never buy. I would never buy Call of Duty. But, oh, God. <laughs> but say you go in and you try and buy Call of Duty and... Uh, you're like, hey, can I get the new Call of Duty, please? They try to upsell you. 
Like, do you want to get the season pass or do you want to pre-order it? You get an extra gun. You get a gun. You get a you get a nice little gun. It's a purple gun. Oh my it's gosh! A, I know. It's just like <laughs> I don't want the gun. I, I I want the full game. You know, I, I want the hundred percent full game that Call of Duty is supposed to be. Yeah. I don't want you to sell me part of it for sixty dollars and then tell me to buy the rest of the game for fifty dollars. What is that? Right. That's a hundred and ten bucks because why? You, you know, you're selling me a game that's got four maps, and we do this every year. We do this every year. The game ends up being more than four maps. The game ends up being more than uh, the traditional features that are released on launch day. What happened to waiting till the game was 100% done and then releasing it for the full price? But it was done. <laughs> What's that? But it was done. Didn't you know they were just adding more stuff to it? <laughs> yeah. Call of Duty. The, the game's so great, they sell it to you twice. <laughs> $60 repetitive uh, game that, uh, you know, that, you know, just don't worry about, you know, it, it, it's 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 unfinished. We know. It's 60 bucks. We know. It's repetitive. We know. And we'll sell you the rest of the game later. Don't worry about it. We do this every year, guys. We do it every year. Buy the season pass. And, you know, if you're one of those people that don't want to buy the season pass, you'll never get the full game's potential. You'll never get what they've planned to put in this game since day one. You know, you'll you'll be stuck, you know, refusing to buy the season pass until until they're ready to, you know, close to ready to make the next title, the next Call of Duty 17. <laughs> and, you know, when they're ready to make that, then they're, they'll, they'll add in, uh, hey, guess what? All DLC is free. It's like, well, well, no, I mean, it's it's a little too late for that. Yeah. It's too late, buddy. So, I don't know. I mean, it's the whole gaming industry is just nothing but a, a scam nowadays. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I really wish, you know, it, and as far as No Man's Sky's missing features and lack of and lack of content that they promised, uh, don't stop there. You know, I mean, wh I think wh who we really need to go after is the some of these AAA companies. I didn't say all. Some of these AAA companies who are selling unfinished games and charging you for the rest later. Yeah, it's That's, all right. And yeah, and, and I think pre-ordering is now something of the past for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it anymore. I don't need. I don't. You know, I went in to buy uh, Battlefront. They're like, hey. If you, uh, I can't remember what she asked me to do. I don't. Uh, it was more money or something. Uh, she was like, "If if you do this and this and this and this, you get Han Solo's pistol." <gasps> a pistol. I'm like, really? No, ain't gonna happen with me. But um, <laughs> and I still haven't bought Battlefront. Are you ever going to buy Battlefront? No, no, somebody offered to give it to me for free. Um, but I don't think the person uh, wants to give it up now. Or for, I don't know. Do not know. Uh, I'm a big, big, giant Star Wars fan. And for me not to buy Battlefront says a lot. I don't know. I don't even know if that's what... Mm, I'm not sure. I'm disappointed with Battlefront. It, it, you know, that's another title that every time I think about it, I want to buy it. But then every time I go to buy it, I talk myself out of it. Mm, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it is. All right. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap things up and let you get back to playing some Burnout 3. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Hey, no, not a problem. You know what? That would be cool if they ported that over and added an online functionality to where you can uh, uh, do some matchmaking and just race somebody else. Oh, they really need to do that. That would be really cool, right? Yeah. Uh, if they were to do something like that, would you want them to touch it and remaster it or change it in any no, way? No, never. You want them to keep it exactly how it is. Exactly how it is. Just copy, paste, move to PS4, and add online feature. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, classics are classics for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think they should be preserved. And, yeah, that would be nice. I would love to see Burnout 3 on PS4. It's Who knows? Maybe it is on there. Maybe we just haven't. I don't know. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. But it's worth checking. There are some old games on the PS4. Yeah, there is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end the show. 
you go back to doing that, peeling out your tires. I will do that. All right. And, uh, you know, this was the first show. It was a little bit, you know, unplanned or whatever. And uh, the next time we come on, it might be Legacy Zero, might be Rum and Apples, or uh, it, it could even be you. If you want to come on the show, come on the show. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about a game that you're playing. We'll talk about a movie that you like or a book that you like. It doesn't matter. This is Cobra TV, and I'm glad you guys are here. And with all that said, guys, as always, I love you, and I will see you all in the next video. Until next time.